Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are glad and happy and ecstatic that you are here um, uh, to uh, partake with us in our Bible study on tonight. And I just want to thank you uh, for joining us live so that we can fellowship together. Um, I want to um, ask that you would take this time um, to stop multitasking and pay attention to what I'm have what I have to say today. Um, and this is whenever we're doing church, whenever we're doing Bible study, Sunday school, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, uh, I need your undivided attention because a lot of times what I'm finding out is that a lot of us are doing so many different things and we get so distracted because we're on these electronic devices and we're not staying focused we're uh you know working on the job and i understand that if you have to work uh we're uh, washing clothes or on uh, social media on different devices uh while we're up or we're cooking and we're doing so many different things, but if we were in seat, if we were here at the church uh, doing Bible study, you would not have those distractions. And the reason why I'm saying this is not because I want everybody to hear my voice. Um, it's because what I'm noticing is that um, the words that's going forth, uh, the medicine that's being preached and taught uh, is not seeping in because people are not taking the full dosage. Uh, medicine doesn't work unless you take the full dosage that the doctor prescribes. And so uh, what happens is you get a partial healing. Uh, and that uh, illness uh, that you're dealing with, virus that you're dealing with, has the potential to come back if you don't take the, med the full medication that has been prescribed by the doctor. I know no by no means consider myself a doctor. I am talking about the medicine that I'm prescribing from the doctor, Jesus. And so as we're going forth with this word, and I know I'm, I'm re-listening to the word. I know the Lord is speaking. Um, I, I, I see that it's not, the evidence is there. I'm still seeing people dealing with uh, struggles. So I want you to give it some, take some time to, to try your best to stop multitasking and listen to the word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you, O oh God, thanking you uh, for this day. We thank you that you have given us another day, another uh, mercy we see every day, O oh God. So we ask right now, God, that you would give us a word, a rhema word, a life-changing word, God. Give us an understanding and a revelation of your Logos word, O oh God. We ask that you would help us in whatever we're going through. We, we pray that this word speaks directly to what we're going through, God. And so we ask right now, God, that you would move supernaturally, oh God. We need a word. We need to hear your voice, oh God. We need to hear direction from you, oh God. Here we are on the hump day of the week, oh God. We ask that you would help us to get over this hump so that we can make it to another Sunday morning, oh God. We just wish we could make it to tomorrow morning, God. So we ask right now that you would touch in the name of Jesus God, that we would hear you and hear you clearly. Sit me down while your spirit raises up. Oh God, crucify my flesh, consecrate the spirit so that the people might not see me, but see you, oh God. It is in Jesus' name we thank you and do pray. Amen. Amen. So now that I got all of the preliminaries out of the way about you guys uh, keeping focused, uh, you got to keep focused. I talk all the time about tunnel vision on the vision, hearing what God has to say. And last week we were talking about um, that there's assistance that's on the way. And what the Lord gave me this week is that uh, we need to deal with essential breakers. God is about to give uh, uh, essential workers an essential break. Uh, and, and I know this is very difficult for those. I'm, I'm one of those people. Uh, I, I know this is very difficult for those who... Um, um, uh, feel like you have to always be doing something. Um, um, when you look at the Bible, when God created the heavens and the earth uh, within six days, on the seventh day, the Bible says that he rested. 
Uh, but I don't think God needed rest. It was essential and written in the Holy Bible for us to understand that it is essential for us to take time to take a break. I remember a, a, a world and a society where Sunday was considered holy, where there were certain things uh, that was not open on Sunday because it was essential for us to take a break. And, and, and now the world has changed. The society that we live in uh, now uh, has a seven day, 24 uh, seven uh, mentality on work and doing the things uh, that we do. We, we don't hold Sunday holy anymore. I remember some, some people can uh, remember when your parents wouldn't let you wash clothes on Sunday. They it was set aside for the Lord. It was set aside for worship. It was set aside if we had services to worship the Lord in the afternoon or the evening. Uh, 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 first Sunday, it was uh, the Lord's Supper, not the Lord's brunch or not the Lord's lunch. Uh, so it was just, you know, it was set aside. And I know a lot of that stuff is, and we deem it as not necessary, but I'm talking about the concept of taking a break. Let me let me break down what I'm talking about in terms of my topic on today. Uh, when we were in, or while we're still in this pandemic, there's people who were considered essential workers, people who are uh, essential for society to stay uh, um, um, present in, in doing things that need to be done, like grocery store workers, uh, EMT, um, and EMTs and uh, nurses and doctors and uh, uh, so many different people uh, were considered essential workers and and they it, it meant that they they needed to work they always had to be functioning and they were considered essential but I want to tell you on today that it is essential that you take a break uh, now and I <laughs> I got to get into that a little bit later but I want to talk about uh, uh, someone who took an essential break. Uh, we're going to jump into this word in Matthew chapter 14. Uh, and and in, this, in this word, I want you to understand the background and the backdrop of what's going on. Uh, you'll find out that Jesus just had word that in the beginning of this text, John the Baptist, uh, if you start reading chapter 14, John the Baptist was just beheaded. John the Baptist was his cousin who was of his same age because you remember his mother uh, Elizabeth and Mary uh, came to each other while they were pregnant, and John was leaping in the stomach uh, of Elizabeth. Uh, so, what you'll deal, what you'll understand is that from the womb, um, this was his uh, cousin that he loved and loved dearly, who recognized his anointing. And the Bible doesn't really talk about everything before uh, uh, Jesus uh, moves into his ministry at the age of 30, um, but I'm quite sure that John the Baptist had a lot to do uh, with Jesus before he moves, before his ministry. So he's dealing with grief. He's dealing with uh, sorrow. He's dealing with the heavy heart. And the Bible says as he's trying to get away, uh, this is when the crowd comes to him and he starts to heal them. He starts to lay hands upon them, which means that uh, 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 as he's trying to mourn the death of his cousin, there's more work that needs to be done. And the Bible says that Jesus has compassion on them. And by him having compassion on them, he, uh, uh, he puts himself to the side. And I want to pause for a moment because I think a lot of us don't understand what we do as ministry and as ministry leaders, what happens is that we put ourselves to the side, uh, um, even though we're dealing with struggles, even though we have issues going on at home, even though we have a, a, a heartache and heartbreak that we're dealing with, we put that to the side to minister to other people because the enemy will always hit you with issues. The enemy will always hit you with concerns and things that you got going on in your life. And you have to put that stuff to the side. And, and a lot of times we say, well, what about me, God? And we're, what happens to me? What, where, where is there a time for me? When do I get to spend time to, to heal? When, when do I get time to recover? And God says, I'm going to give you an essential break. And a lot of people don't understand, but you have to take 
your break. You have to take your time. You have to make sure that you take time for yourself. And this is what we're going to jump into with this text, because this is where Jesus feeds the 5,000 with the two uh, fish, five loaves of bread. We know the story. Those who don't know the story, I, 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 I beg you to read this context. I want you to read the context because I don't want you to think that I'm trying to con you. Uh, but when you look at the storyline, you'll find out that John the Baptist is beheaded and Jesus starts to feed the 5,000. The disciples receive the 12 baskets of overflow. Everybody is taken care of but Jesus. So when you get to verse 22, uh, this is where we're starting in this text. What you'll find out in verse 22, it says, and immediately after this, what he's talking about was the 5,000 uh, fed by the two fish and the five loaves. It says, Jesus insisted, I'm in the New Living Translation, it's on the bottom of the screen. Uh, Jesus insisted that the disciples, that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he spent the uh while he sent the people home after sending the people home he went up to the hill by himself to pray now watch this it says he sends the disciples away those are his people and those who remember my sermon from sunday those are the five percent uh he sends the essential uh uh workers uh he sends them on the boat he sends uh, uh, his 5% on the boat. He sends uh, on the rest. Uh, he sends the rest away. He says, now that I've done what I've had to do for you, he says, you can go home. And the Bible says that he goes up to the hill alone. It says uh, he goes to the hill by himself to pray. So, which means he takes out time just with him and God he has to rejuvenate. He has to uh, replenish himself after pouring out, after uh, 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 dealing with grief and, and dealing with uh, mourning his cousin, even though he knew uh, that his cousin had to pave the way for him. He knew uh, what was going on, but he still had to take time for himself. And see, what a lot of us don't understand is that we don't want to take time and we want to feel guilty because we're sending the people off uh, without us. And so many of us don't understand that if you don't take a break and if you don't take time, then what you will understand is that you will break. If you don't take a break, then you will break. I don't think people hear what I'm trying to say. And what will happen is you'll hurt the people more than you'll help the people because you'll break on them and they will find you uh, uh, in a uh, broken state. And it will break them to see you broken. And see, sometimes a lot of us, because we won't take breaks, we break on people. And then we turn around and allow our flesh to go on, 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 on other people. Either, uh, uh, either we deal with the fact uh, um, that we turn that flesh on them and start uh, uh, turning that irritation and, and, and the fact that you're broken and the fact that you haven't had an opportunity to take a break on those people and you start uh, 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 rashing out on them and, and hashing out uh, uh, issues that you shouldn't have, uh, that you should have hashed out before you ration it out on the people. Uh, and these are the people that have been helping you. These are the disciples that are walking with you, that are learning from you, that are, are, are there to support you. Or you turn on the people that came to receive from you. And, and so what God is saying is that you need time to replenish. If Jesus being Jesus, Emmanuel, wrapped in, God wrapped in flesh, took time to go replenish between just him and God, uh, uh, then you have to do the same. And so many of us are so uh, consumed thinking that we, we the people can't do it without us. They they can't go without us. They, they can't. Now, let me tell you something. Mess around and die. Why Watch what happens. People will turn around. They will grieve for a minute and move on to Joshua. They said the, uh, uh, Moses was dead and, and, and Moses pulled them out of the wilderness. And, and as soon as Moses died, the Bible says that they mourned for 40 days like they were supposed to. And they turned to Joshua and said, we will follow you just like we followed Moses. And, and, and so y'all got to understand something. Don't sit up and try to think that you're going to hold down your position by not sharing what you do 
or 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 always being the dependent that people have to hold on to a uh, uh, god will pull and and will pull you out of the equation and put somebody else in the equation and they will move on and that will be their support in the position that you were in so you got to learn how to take an essential break y'all got to hear me on today you got to take a break and allow the people to understand what they're going through without you Sometimes people don't understand your value until you're not around to do what you do. Some people don't understand uh, your, 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 your worth until they don't have you around and they see all of the things that you do because sometimes it's on automatic. They automatically see you do this. They automatically see you do that. And they say in their mind, maybe they shouldn't be doing it. Or they say in their mind that maybe I should help. But because you got this I'll do it spirit, uh, you are you you always doing everything, and sometimes they need to see your value by you pulling back, taking an essential break. And it's in the text. I want y'all to understand. Look at this. It says, after sending them home, he went into the hills by himself to pray. And the Bible says, night fell uh, while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples. I'm in verse 24. It says, meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble, far away from land. For a strong wind had risen. Listen to what he does. He allows them to get on the boat. He allows them to get in trouble because what he wants them to do is to understand how you uh, got out of trouble the last time that I was in the hinder parts of the boat sleep and I got up and said, peace be still. Now it's, it's another time I'm not there and you don't even have the sense to call on me. But, but, but what he does is says, I need you to experience trouble without me. What he's saying is that sometimes people have to experience life without you so that they can realize how much they value you and how much they need you and how much you are a blessing unto them. And so sometimes you have to pull back so that people listen. Absence make the heart grow fonder. And sometimes you got to pull yourself out so that people can really have a, a, a opportunity to miss you and miss what you do, miss what you bring to the table. How many times have you done what what you've done and it seemed like people don't even have the audacity to say thank you they can't they, they don't even they, they can't even say thank you they just move on and let you do what you do and keep on moving and when it's time for them to appreciate you when it's time for them to lift you up when it's time for them to give you a pat on the back they, they act as if you ain't did nothing. So what you have to do is sometimes take that essential break for them to realize as you're going through the storm, like, oh, no, we don't have Jesus in the hinder part of the boat. So now what are we going to do? It, the Bible says they were afraid because they were going through. These are professional fishermen. So they've been in storms before. He says they, they had to be hit with a storm that they couldn't handle. And the reason why God allowed them to go through that because he needed them to understand the power of his presence. And so that's what a lot of us don't understand is that people don't understand the power of your presence because you always available. There's some people you need to shoot to voicemail. There's some people you need to tell, no, nah, you need to get on your knees and pray to God for yourself. You are a crutch and you are a handicap for them. And God is saying, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to let them know your value and I'm going to give you the break and the replenishment that you need. The Bible says that Jesus took time. It, it, it was 3 a.m. in the morning. He sent them out in the evening and it, it was 3 a.m. in the morning. So Jesus took some serious rest in God. And see, that's what a lot of us don't understand. And this is this message, watch this, is not for the essential uh, 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 lay people. This, this message is not for the people who already been on break. See, what you need to do is you need to step up for the people who have been the essential workers who've been holding everything down while you've been at home doing nothing. You need to step up and give them an essential break. You need to get up and say, you know what? I thank God that they were there to hold it down for me while I wasn't there. So let me get up and, and break my back to give them a break. And so let me step up and be a, a, a help to them and not a hindrance because sometimes we just automatically think that people are always there and they are always going to be there. But God says, is, listen, what I need you to do is if you want them to stay there and you want them to be stable and you want them to continue to be there for you while you're not doing as much as you possibly can in this
this season. He said, I need you to give them a break so that they won't break. Woo! That's a lot. That's a word. Uh, listen to what he says. Uh, he says, um, they were, uh, and they were fighting. I'm in 24. Meanwhile, the disciples were tr uh, in trouble far away from land. Uh, for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. Uh, they were fighting this, they were fighting this storm, but they were fighting it only to their abilities. Watch this, because sometimes God needs you. He has sent you to be in people's lives for a reason, but sometimes you have to give them. It's just like when you do on the job training. Uh, when you do on the job training, uh, if you're training a new trainee, uh, you can only let them shout at you for so long, then you have to give them an opportunity to step out and do it on their own. Now, what you have to understand is you have to equate that they're going to make some errors. They're not going to do it like you do it. You, they're, they're not going to fill in the way you fill in. But at least you're giving them the opportunity to fail. See, some of us have not, uh, we have done people a disservice because we don't, want, we don't want to give them an opportunity to fail. And so we step in, we break our backs. We lose, uh, 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 we lose sight of what's going on at home because we're so busy working for the people that, that don't want to get up. And so sometimes you have to give it a break. You have to give it some time. You have to take some time away. But watch this. It says, and about three o'clock, I'm in verse 25. It says, and about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. Here's what happens when they are dealing with the fact that Jesus took an essential break. They are dealing with a situation where they're in a situation where they understand the power of Jesus' presence. But when Jesus shows them a different aspect of him, uh, they don't even know how to take him because now he comes to rescue them in the midst of of them going through something they couldn't handle on their, on their own. But they can't see you as the rescuer if you don't turn around and show them the value of your presence. And the only way you can show them the value of your presence is that you don't be present and then you have to come. Listen, here's what God does. God gives him a break and then says, listen, they'll get over it. Watch this. Y'all not understanding what he says? He says, they'll get over it. He says, I told them to go to the other side, which means I knew that they were going to make it to the other side, even though they were going to go through some storms, trials, tribulations. They were going to have some difficulties in the process of going without me. He says, listen, but if God want me to make it back, I'll make it back right on time because that's what God does when he gives you an essential break. He'll give you a break, uh, 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 just enough time for it not to break. Uh, uh, so even though they're running everything without you, even though they're handling things without you, if it's a need for you to get back, you'll get back right on time. I don't think y'all understand what this text is trying to teach us because so many of us as parents, so many of us as leaders on our jobs and, and, and leaders in our families don't think that we can take a break or the family not going to make it without me or the kids are not going to do without me. Baby, you better take a break because watch, if you die, they'll move on. They'll mourn you for a moment and move on you gotta learn because if you don't if you don't take uh, uh you don't take the break you need you're gonna die y'all hear what i said y'all you're gonna break yourself and die you're gonna sit, send yourself to an early grade because you're stressing yourself out about things that listen this is the same thing i had to deal with the church is god's bride and, and, and I'm not, and I said this and I meant this. I'm not going to lose my bride messing around with God's bride. This is God's bride. The church belongs to God. Now I do what I can and I listen to the Holy Spirit on what I can do, but I take my essential breaks to make sure that my home is in order. I never want my children to be at a place where they hate God's bride because I'm too busy uh, uh, committing adultery with God's bride. That, uh, that, uh, God's bride don't have nothing to do with my bride. See, uh, me messing around with God's bride is me uh, uh, committing adultery on my bride. And see, what God is saying is that I, I, didn't, I didn't call you to do that. I called you to be an under shepherd to make sure that my bride is taken care of, but I need you to take care of your bride first. And so that's biblical. And most of us don't want to talk about that because the Bible says that a single woman's cares are of her, uh, are of the world, but the, uh, a, a married woman's cares are of her husband. And the same goes for a husband. You got to take care of your, you got to take care of your home first. 
Watch what he says. Look, look what happens. It says he comes walking on the water. They think he's a ghost, and they don't. They they don't even understand what's going on. Jesus spoke to them. He says, "Don't be afraid." I'm in verse 27. He says, "Don't be afraid." He said, "Take courage. I am here." He says, "Listen." Uh, 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 you were afraid of the breakdown. You were afraid of the storm, the trial, the tribulation, the thing that you couldn't handle, the thing that you didn't have the confidence to handle yourself. Because if I told you to go to the other side, that meant I knew you were going to make it to the other side and you should have had confidence. You should have had faith to believe that you're going to make it to the other side. But they had to see him in a different way and their faith wasn't there. And, and, and what a lot of times what Jesus was doing is that he was trying to teach them and increase their faith for them to understand what he was trying to say unto them. And so many times we, we don't understand that God has to put us in these predicaments where we have to trust God and trust that God is going to uh, uh, rescue us and he's going to come on time. Like, look, why do we sing the song, he's an on time God, but always worried about when God going to show up. God going to show up right at the um, uh, appointed time and at the appointed place when God is time, when it's time for God to show up, he's going to show up uh, right Right on time. And so what he does is allow us to go to a place where it seems like it's unbearable knowing that God won't put more on you than you can bear. So he's allowing you to feel like you're about to go through a breakdown. And, and, and he, he, he allows you to feel like it, 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 it's, it, it, it's at the end of the rope. And God says, listen, I'm going to put you in this predicament so that you can realize how much, I, how much you need me. And, and, and what he does is he shows up right on time. Uh, uh, to, 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 to show them something different. And the only way he can show them something different is if he takes a break. Y'all, uh, uh, listen what happens. If you, don't, if you don't take a break, then you won't be able to show people what they did wrong while you were taking a break. Uh, uh, because you always pick up the pace. You always pick up the slack. You always uh, uh, step in and say, no, well, you don't do this. You didn't do that right. You didn't do this right. You have to uh, 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 take time to say, you know what, while I wasn't here, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. And this is these are all teachable moments. That's what Jesus was trying to do. He was trying to teach them something. I'm going to show you. He says, um, uh, he says, take courage for I am here. Then uh, in verse 28, it says, then Peter called unto him and said, Lord, is if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Jesus replies in verse 29, he says, yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. 31, it says Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. He says, watch this. This is where I want to get to. He says, you have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? It says, when they climb, I'm in 32. It says, when they climb back on the boat, the wind stopped. He says, just because I called you to come, don't mean that coming is going to be easy. Uh, just because I allowed you to get out of the boat and to walk on the unstable. Uh, because basically what he was doing was he put Peter in charge. And, and Peter tries to do what Jesus does. And uh, what he does is he, he, he puts himself in a predicament where he's doing the unthinkable. He's doing what the others couldn't do. He, he's walking on water. He's walking on the unstable. And the only thing that stopped him was uh, dealing with the winds around him. And I said, God, why didn't you just allow it to be a smooth transition? He said, I needed him to see what Jesus went through. Jesus was not just walking on the water while it was calm. Jesus was walking on the water while it was boisterous, while he was dealing with the storms and the waves. So yes, just because he's uh, doing it, it doesn't mean that it was a calm situation. He needed to let him know that you had to have a lot of faith to do what he did because a lot of people will see you and see how easy you make it look and they need to be in that position and you need to be able to put somebody else in charge so that they can start sinking and say, Lord, I need some help and then that's when they'll come and reach out to you when you when you are there to save them and catch them but if you wouldn't have let them get out of the boat 
if you wouldn't have let them step out on their own, if you wouldn't have given them charge, if you wouldn't have delegated something to them, if you wouldn't have let them handle some of the things that you make look so easy, uh, 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 then they would not have started to sink and see that they that, that it, it's their lack of faith or it's their lack of training, it's their lack of listening or something that you tried to do, uh, falling in the same spirit of you. And, and, and what happens is God allows you uh, uh, to catch them and, and, and be able to teach them all at the same time because he catches Peter and then him and Peter go walking back to the boat and he says, why did you have such little faith? Because he, he says, listen, if you would have had faith, you could have still walked on the word and the word was to come and I told you to come and if you would have came uh, and, and not allow the winds and the things that uh, that were distracting him, uh, uh, if you would have allowed that not to distract you, you would have still been able to walk to me like you were supposed to, but he allowed him to walk out because Peter was the person that he delegated to be in charge because he was bold enough to step out of the boat and do what Jesus was doing. Jesus was uh, preparing miracles. Jesus was doing things that had not been seen before. So because he had enough faith to believe, he said, I need you to step out. Essential breakers. You need to take a break because you need to show forth the people who think they can handle what you do, give them a taste so that they can drown, so that they can almost drown because God will put you there to catch them so that they won't drown. Sometimes you make stuff look so easy, other people, you ever had people on the sideline talking and making it seem like, like, like let me tell you something, LeBron James just won a championship and, and always I respect greatness, you know, uh, 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 but he make it look so easy. And so many times people are looking at it like, yeah, uh, uh, the East Coast was easy uh, 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 because the East Coast don't have the force that the West Coast have. Now, he said, listen, I went from the East Coast to the West Coast. Now I'm a champion on the West Coast. He said, what else do, what other challenge you want me to have? Because sometimes what we do is we make things look so easy. And so sometimes what people will do is they'll put themselves in your shoes or put themselves in a position where they think they can do what you do. But if you never take a break, if you never Never stop doing what you do, then you never give them an opportunity to step in your shoes and see they don't fit. So many people think that they can do what you do. So many people don't appreciate what you do. But if you don't take a break, they'll never get the opportunity to, 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 to step in your shoes. They'll never get an opportunity to walk on the water that you're walking on uh, and see that it's not just the fact that you're walking on water. It's the fact that you're balancing yourself in, in storms. Uh, and and, and you're, you're focused so much that you're not allowing the storm to stop you from walking on the unstable. And, and, and so what a lot of people don't understand is that none of this would happen and none of this would, 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 would be a learning opportunity if you didn't take a break. And so what God is trying to tell you on today is that it's time for you to take a break. It's time for you uh, to take this time uh, 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 to step back. Listen, I don't know if it's a week. I don't know if it's two weeks. I don't know uh, if it's a month. Uh, uh, um, I, I don't know what it is. But sometimes uh, uh, God will give you the opportunity to take a break. And, and, and so so what I need some of y'all to understand uh, is that if God is speaking to you and God is telling you that it's time for you to take a break so that the people will appreciate, the people will understand. Listen, they'll get over it. This is the, what is he trying to say. He, he's trying to say, listen, they'll get to the they'll get to their destination. Uh, uh, and, and if I need you to go back, then I'll pull you back at the appointed time. Uh, but some of them, some of them need to see you in a different light. And the reason why they'll see you in a different light is because they'll see that without you there, their storms are not as easy as they were before. And so what God is trying to tell you is that in this season, while you got help coming, it may be time for you to take a break because that help is there. Because the, 
that, that doesn't mean that your help is going to be, remember last week I talked to you that there is a, 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 a temporary help. And then there's also uh, longevity help. There's 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 long term help, and then there's temporary help. There's part time help. And so while you got that part time help to help your uh, long term help, then you need to take your breaks so that you can make sure that you replenish yourself in this season, so that you can get back to doing what God has called you to do, so that you can do uh, 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 the assignment that God has have that God has on your life with the uh, the, the right amount of energy. The right amount of power. Some of us are not, uh, our light is dimming because we're not illuminating because we haven't charged up. We haven't taken our time. We're getting irritated. We're getting agitated. Ministry isn't the same for you because you're not, you're, you're not taking time to even yourself miss ministry. Uh, 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 I would like to say that Jesus missed them. Uh, while he was taking his time with, 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 with the Lord, he was taking his time to get replenished. I think it also give, gave him an opportunity to his heart to grow fonder for the ministry. So he goes back to them walking on water. And so what, what a lot of us have to do is make sure that we're taking this break that we need so that we can, uh, uh, on both sides, come out better. Y'all hear what I'm saying? What you do can be done whether you hear or not, whether you are a mother and you need to take a break. <laughs> For all of you mothers that are homeschooling your children, essential break. For all of you fathers that are school homeschooling your children, essential break. For all of you that have been working from home and, and not leaving the house, essential break. For all of you that have been essential workers, been going to work through the whole pandemic while everybody else has been taking this unemployment money and living it up and going out of town and going to Ohio, Atlanta, Vegas, and you've been working the entire time, essential break. Everybody needs to take a break. And some of us think that things are not going to work without us. But I dare you on today to take a break. You'll find out that everything will be all right. God bless you on today is my prayer, and I'm praying that the Lord will bless you and the, and the Lord will allow you to take this break that's needed. Uh, some of us don't, just don't understand, uh, and I, I'm telling you, the Lord told me to, 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 to teach this message on today, uh, and I know that I have to listen to it as well. Uh, uh, whatever uh, comes out of my mouth reaches me first in my studies, and so I have to deal with uh, uh, taking my own breaks and, and, and taking time for myself. Uh, and the Lord is just like, hey, you know, uh, it'll still get done. And so you, you have to um, replenish yourself. It's called self-care. Uh, my sister has a, a ministry called I Am a Priority. Make yourself a priority at some point because you, 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 um, you give yourself to everyone else so much that you rarely have time to yourself. When is the last time you took a vacation by yourself? When is the last time you, you know, just took a break by yourself? You know, go in a room by yourself. You know, uh, go watch a movie by yourself or go find a man cave or a she shed or something. Just read a book by yourself. You know, you, you got to find some time just between you and the Lord where you can replenish yourself and be calm, cool, collected, and so that you can come back stronger and come back and do uh, what you do uh, with more intensity, uh, you know, with more energy, energy and vigor. Uh, you can do it because you are now energized. You have been replenished, and now the Lord has given you a second wind and a second boost of energy to do what you do. And I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but you need to take that break on today. You need to take that break this week. You need to tell people, you need to shut people down on your phone because they've been pulling you. They've been pulling on you for a long time. They've been pulling on you and they're just pulling and pulling. And I mean, some of the stuff that they're pulling on you with, it's not even necessary. You know, uh, uh, some of the stuff that they can they, they can handle themselves uh, or, or sometimes they just need to go to God themselves and let God handle it. And I've learned that in the past. Sometimes when I, when I shut myself down and take my break, uh, they'll be like, oh, pastor, I handled it. The Lord, the Lord gave me the answer. God bless you. And so that's what I want you to do today. I want you to pray and ask the Lord, uh, is it your time for an essential break? 
is it your time for an essential break? God bless you. Heavenly Father, thank you. We praise you. We give your name glory. We ask that you would give us uh, a word uh, on confirmation as to if it's time for us to take a break when the opportunity presents itself that we won't turn it down or uh, say no because we think that nothing is going to uh, be able to uh, be handled without us. God, so we ask that you would just uh, continue to uh, talk to us, speak to us, lead us and guide us, oh God, because we're going through so much during this time. This pandemic has been a uh, roller coaster of emotions and spiritual upliftments and uh, uh, fleshly attacks. Oh God, so we just ask that you would continue to keep us and cover us. Oh God, we've been dealing with uh, mourning and uh, dealing with uh, anxiety and uh, racial uh, injustice and so many different things that we've been dealing with during this pandemic. We ask that you would just help us to have strength, uh, courage in this time. And we ask right now that you would replenish us so that our spirits will be intact. We thank you. We praise you. We give your name glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all today. Uh, God keep you is our prayer. And uh, remember, go to www.mountcharitynbc.org for any updates, any prayer requests that you may have. You can go on to our website and do that. That's mtcharitynbc.org. Uh, and you can, you know, get on there and find out all of the updates of what we have. The calendar is on there, our calendar of events, the things that we're doing. Uh, you can get on our Facebook, our Instagram, uh, and know what we're doing. And so the Lord is just blessing us. We're continuously working. We ask that you continue to uh, pray for us as we pray for you. God bless you on today. <laughs>